All right, and we are live. So again, as always, guys, let me know if my microphone is too quiet. Still a learning experience. Great to see you here tonight, guys. Thanks so much for joining. Uh, tonight we're going to be creating, this is going to be a very chill live stream. This is not going to be a specific topic. This is just going to be me kind of just kind of creating an environment. Um, I've opted for a Mars landscape, A, because multiple reasons behind it. Because A, we get a lot of free stuff from Epic with Unreal Engine 5. And B, I want to play around with Lumen. And I want to play with, around with some of the atmosphere settings. And this is what should be... The atmosphere settings are kind of the, the main reason I wanted to make this environment tonight. So I hope that's an interesting topic for you guys. I know you're probably tired of seeing rocks at this point because, you know, red rocks are uh, a thing that we've been seeing a lot in the past few weeks, right? So um, I hope you're excited. I'm happy to see you guys here. So let's get started. Great to see you, everyone. So as you can see here, I've got a very blank scene. All I did is I got, went to file new level, created a blank scene, started from scratch. Um, we're gonna, just going to take a quick look through my project settings because I know some of you have asked for that in the chat. So I'm going to go to project settings right here. And let's take a look at the rendering tab. I'm going to scroll down rendering so we can see. I'm going to scroll down to the lumen section. Virtual texturing is on. Global illumination is using lumen. Reflection is lumen. Let's see. Okay. Global tracing and virtual shadow maps. All right, and this is pretty much all we need to know for this. Uh, yeah, so let's get started. So as always, the first thing I'd like to do is like, I'm gonna create a post-process volume. As you can see, I've changed my interface from Unreal Engine 5. So in the settings down here in the content browser, uh, sorry, no, sorry, that's not true, not there, in window, up here, if you go to, uh, I believe it's in load layout, you can load the default editor layout uh, or the Unreal Engine 4 classic layout. I find this really handy uh, because, um, uh, you know, I don't really like the, whoops, I don't really like the Unreal Engine 5 layout. It's, yeah, I just kind of prefer the old Unreal Engine 4 layout. So, you know, bear with me. So, now that that's being said, I will create a post-process volume, and as always, in the detail panel, I'm going to go for unbound. Whoops. Unbound. I can't type tonight. All right, click on that, and set the auto exposure off. Disable auto exposure because it's the worst, and now we are ready to get started. Now, uh, Epic has created for us a series of awesome stuff for us. So I'm going to go to Ancient Content, Blueprints, and I believe it is in... If I could do this. Let's see. Geometry. There we go. So you can kind of see the Epic Creed that a whole series of blueprints for their Unreal Engine 5 release. The reason for this is uh, just so that we have something to... The, the blueprints are just a collection of a whole bunch of, mess, of assets. I'm going to get into this later. So I'm just going to place something here. And this is obviously huge, so I'm going to actually delete that. And why can't I delete this? There we go. Before I do anything, i got to go to Window. And go to... Sorry, not at Window Tools. Oh, where is this? Environment Light Mixer. There we go. been looking for that. So Environment Mixer, for those of you who are not familiar with it, um, this is a very easy way of creating lights. It's just going to create a, a, a light system, an exterior lighting system, extremely easy in just a few clicks. So I'm going to do that one more time. If you didn't catch that, go to Window, and you're going to go to Environment Light Mixer. Open this, and you'll notice I don't have anything on my scene right now. All you need to do is click Create Skylight, Create Atmospheric Light, Create Sky Atmosphere, and Create Volumetric Cloud. Now you'll see nothing shows up. We're going to hide and unhide the directional light, and now we have a sky. So this is a very quick way of establishing... Um, just establishing a default light system that works pretty well out of the box. It's very quiet. In just a few clicks, you get a whole system that just works, right? So this is, uh, I made a tutorial on this. So yes, I went fast here, but there's a tutorial called the, How to Use the Environment Light Mixer made by me. Go check that out. And I kind of go through it step by step to show you how it works. So uh, yeah, so the Environment Light Mixer, for those of you who don't know, it's amazing and it just works out of the box. So now that we have our, you know, just a sky in here, I'm going to 
go back to my content browser and lower this a little bit. And you'll see that we have in the ancient content folder, we have the geometry. And if I, I have a filter here called blueprint class, so it's going to show all the blueprints. And I'm just going to drag and drop something in here. And you'll see it's huge. It's a really massive environment. Um, or not environment, sorry, but just a massive asset. It's really, really big. So I didn't change my camera speed there. Um, it's really just a collection of a whole bunch of different individual meshes. Okay. So I'm going to, just going to start establishing an environment by using and kit bashing all the stuff that Epic has made for us in the Unreal Engine 5 demo, right? And yeah, as Bacon's Bass says in the chat, um, the Environment Light Mixer is a pretty new tool. That was released with Unreal Engine uh, with 4.26. Um, so that just came out, I think, I want to say January and December or so. It's pretty new. So uh, definitely go use that. So before we even start placing stuff, we're going to start taking a look at reference because I want to make a Martian landscape. I want to understand how atmosphere works, how it looks, what the kind of, just a general mood that we want to go with, right? And for those of you asking, yes, the stream will be saved for later, as always. None of my streams are unlisted after the stream ends. My live streams are always available for your personal viewing after the fact. So if you have to leave or, you know, life happens, you can watch it later. So let's go ahead and Google some Martian landscapes right here. So I've just Googled Mars sunset, and you'll see Mars sunsets are not red, they're blue, which is interesting. Um, I'm not smart enough to tell you why the, the sunsets are blue, but apparently, due to the scattering of the atmosphere, the sunsets are blue. Um, I'm just going to look at more Mars landscape, for example. And obviously, it's very red. It's very rugged. We've got a really interesting, you know, atmosphere going on here. Um, the sky is very orange. It's just there's not much hue variation happening here, right? So fortunately, if I take a look at this, I don't know if that's a Mars landscape or that's just somewhere in California. Um, I probably should be looking at references from NASA themselves, but hey, whatever gets us that Mars feel, right? So we, we noticed here that we got like lots of rocks, lots of sand, and a very kind of bluish, desaturated kind of atmosphere going on. <clears throat> so, now that we kind of established that, I'm the first thing I like doing when I create an environment because I'm not making a playable environment. Um, the first thing I have to do is I set up a camera. Okay. We're going to establish a shot. We want to establish the framing of your shot as soon as possible. Right? Uh, so I'm going to turn my frame right here. There we go. So it's really important, especially if you're making a 360 playable environment, like a game or something, then please, this story, please disregard what I'm about to say. Um, but in this case, we're not going to be making a playable environment. We just want to make a pretty picture right? And that is why it's so important to set up your camera as soon as possible. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the cinematic tab up top, add level sequence, and I'm just going to save this as live stream camera. Save that. And I got to dock my sequencer right here. Okay, so sequencer is, for those of you who don't really know what it is, sequencer is basically Unreal's I don't really know what to call it. Sequencer is kind of unique to Unreal. It's basically it's renderer. It's where you render everything. It's where you animate everything. It's where you load in all the things you want to trigger, the events you want to trigger. It's where you add all your character animations. It's where you, you know, do so much stuff. Uh, there's a lot to unpack in the sequencer. So if you're not familiar with it, I recommend that you take a look at and learn a little bit about it yourself. And before I forget, I'm going to save this. So I'm going to save this level and call this live stream. Mars. There we go. Okay. So now that we have our sequencer, we're going to go create a new camera. And first thing I like doing to my camera is I'm going to change my camera settings because I don't like the aspect ratio. So it's 69 digital film. I'm going to set this to maybe hmm, 69 DSLR. There we go. I like 69 DSLR because it's basically a full frame. Um, it's using a full frame sensor essentially, but cropped for 69. And for those of you who don't know what full frame sensors are, it's basically a full frame, a 35 millimeter camera uses the full frame sensor. <clears throat> so 
Uh, for those of you wondering, I'm just going to take a, just, uh, tell you, explain this real quick. I didn't make this in five minutes. This asset right here is made by Epic. This was all included in the Valley of the Ancients demo that you can download for free on the marketplace. Uh, so just, no, don't worry. I didn't make this in five minutes. I cannot take credit for that. So with that being said, I'm going to establish my camera right now. And because I don't really know what I'm going to do yet, I'm going to set it to zero. I'm just going to place the camera right, kind of low to the ground for now until I've kind of figured out what direction I'm going with my shot. So again, this is going to be a very chill live stream. I'm just going to experiment a little bit and play with some different settings until I get an image that I'm satisfied with. So uh, let's see now. What other assets? So as you can see here, so I've downloaded the entire Valley of the Ancients demo that comes with Unreal Engine 5, and there's a whole crap load of assets here. And you'll notice they're not static meshes, they're blueprints. Why is that? You might be wondering, like, why did Epic, Epic include a whole bunch of blueprints uh, instead of, you know, uh, proper, just static meshes, right? Uh, the reason for this is you'll see we have a whole collection. Let's say I, I drag and drop this blueprint here, and I'm going to get out of camera mode. You'll notice that all these blueprints are actually a collection. It's an amalgamation of a whole bunch of different static meshes together. This means that artists at Epic could spend, you know, like a month or something, or I don't know, imaginary number of a week or a month, kind of just piecing together and just making a whole massive chunk, a massive art to really make a really pretty chunk of assets together. So if I open up this blueprint, for example, Come on, load up. You'll see there's a whole series of static meshes in the blueprint. Now, where is the viewport? Yeah, so you'll see right now, see how this is, um, this is my blueprint actor here. And you'll see there's a whole bunch of different static meshes in here. If I scroll down, open this list here, you'll see there's a bunch of static meshes, right? And so this is basically, what the best way of explaining this? Imagine just a collection of, so yes, exactly. So think of it as Lego, okay? So imagine each individual static mesh here is an individual Lego block and together they create a bigger Lego, you know, a, a bigger Lego piece, right? Um, that's how you get like a, a TIE fighter out of Lego and out of those individual pieces. And this is how, it, 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 exactly, Agastya Patel, it's just like a collection in Blender, essentially. Um, bl the blueprints is, that's actually a, a, bra a very big um, simplification of what blueprints is, but this is one way to use blueprints, okay? So it's really just a collection of individual assets. And if I open up this big one here, this big bad boy, uh, this way, I'm going to open him up here. Uh, viewport. Oh, actually, this is one big static mesh. Interesting. Okay. I didn't know that. But let's say if I open up another one. You'll see this one here is this massive cliff face here. Uh, this is a, a collection of a whole bunch of individual static meshes, right? Now, this was not really possible in or recommended to do in um, what you call it in Unreal Engine 4 because this creates a absurd amount of draw calls, okay? And the reason for and now the reason why we can do it in Unreal Engine 5 is because Nanite, all these meshes are using Nanite. And Nanite handles draw calls very differently. So what this was not possible or recommended to do in Unreal Engine 4, but it's totally doable now. Wiener Kaiser, thank you so much for the super chat, man. I really appreciate that. Cheers, man. <clears throat> so I hope that kind of explains, you know, what the blueprint thing is doing here, right? So it's it's um it's like a, again, it's just a collection of a bunch of different assets. And that way you can really kind of make these super structures, right? So if I just, you know, wanted, you know, if I just selected this one chunk here on its own, it's not very impressive, right? But as part of a collection, it becomes a much more impressive hero cliff face. That's why this is interesting. Exactly, Luca Fagion. Um, because then I erase the polygon that are not visible. Exactly. Um, Nanite has a ton of stuff happening under the hood that I'm actually still researching right now, and I will make a dedicated tutorial on on Nanite and how it works and the why it works, um, but that's a work in progress. I'm still learning how it all works myself. I don't want to make another tutorial like my previous Lumen tutorial last week because 
I'm not a big fan of making tutorials where I'm like, oh, you know, this works because I don't know why it worked, but you know, I'm just trying to, it, it's not very professional, you know? I wanna make tutorials where I know what I'm talking about, and I think you want that those kind of tutorials as well. So I'm not a big fan of making guides or, you know, videos about a subject that I'm not 100% confident in. <clears throat> so, with that being said, I'm going to close this. And now we can start, you know, I'm going to start working on my camera again. And let me just answer some questions real quick. Death, greetings from Oslo, William. Do you think you'll be making more for movie render queue in UE5 or sequencer? Um, hey, man, welcome uh, welcome to the stream. Uh, so yeah, I'm definitely going to be using movie render queue moving forward. I tested it yesterday, and movie render queue does work in Unreal Engine 5, so that's a very good thing. <clears throat> UE5 Project Storm, have you had problems deleting landscapes? Uh, I haven't played with landscapes yet because landscapes are not actually supported by Lumen yet. So, no, I have not. <clears throat> All right, so let's go back to my camera now. And I'm just gonna place a camera, kind of a ground level, something like this. Again, I have no idea which direction I'm going for with this shot, but that's kind of the beauty of art, right? You just kind of try new things and eventually you throw a ton of mud at the wall and eventually something's gonna stick. So I'm just gonna change the aspect ratio here make it a bit more widescreen because I'm a big fan of the 235 to 1 aspect ratio. And I'm going to exit this. There we go. And I think I'm going to, yeah. So I'm going to go create or go get some more assets here. What's really annoying is that, whoa, okay, where did this go? Okay, so that's actually really small. I don't like that. Where, okay. I'm not a big fan of the way the Unreal Engine 5 handles placing objects. Like I would say, that's a little bit different than it used to be, and that's kind of annoying. Like normally, at least in UE4, if you drag and drop an object, you know, at that spot, it would, you know, kind of show up at that spot, but now it's not. It's kind of showing up in midair. Maybe it's because it's a blueprint, so that, that could be. So these mountains here are great for you know, distant mountains, they're really big. So these are awesome for kind of establishing the background and a horizon. I'm gonna go back to my shot here. Move this down. I'm gonna start getting some depths in here and really just kind of push, push these far away and establish my horizon line. Cause that's, the, that's really the key to any, to establishing any shot. You really want to kind of figure out what the heck is happening in a world space, right? <clears throat> So, I'm going to move this. It's over there. How big is this? Yeah, okay. No. I'm going to move this down a little bit. I really want to lock my camera, so I'm going to just play, leave this here like that, maybe. And, I re okay, I can pin this. Perfect. There we go. That's what I wanted to do. So for those of you who don't really know, uh, this is kind of an old trick, but if you select your camera in your sequencer you can and you select the camera, you'll have the kind of the preview showing up in the window here. You can pin that. So it's kind of always visible. So let's say I'm going to go move this mountain over here. It's really nice for kind of getting an idea of, of dressing your shot because now you can get a preview of what it looks like in a camera, but without having to be locked into camera view mode. So, <clears throat> now I'm going to establish this, going to see what other assets we have. Uh, these are obviously, okay, that's really small, don't like that. It's really hard to get a feel for how big these blueprints are. Some of them are huge, some of them are small. Yeah, see, why would, why is this, I think this is an Unreal Engine 5 issue, uh, because... I don't remember having this problem in Unreal Engine 4 where I think it would just be placed in midair somewhere. So maybe it's a Blueprints thing, maybe it's an Unreal Engine 5 thing, I'm not sure. Yeah, these are meshes are probably going to be good for you know more close-up stuff, more hero stuff. So I'm going to leave that, I'm going to delete that. Let's say, I'm going to call butt. There we go. 
Okay, that's obviously way too small. Again, way too small. I'm just going to drag a series of them out here and see which one. I might fry my PC here. Uh, Mockety, should I download the 100 gigabyte project TP to get these assets? Yes, absolutely. These assets are amazing, and I do recommend that you get them. Just the fact that you can play around with the Valley of the Ancients uh, demo example scene is really, really, really handy. It's so useful. It's so fun to kind of take it apart and rip it apart and see how they approach things. Uh, that's my favorite thing of playing around with epic assets is that you know, you get to learn how they approach a certain, you know, challenge, for lack of a better word. <clears throat> uh, yeah, okay, so this is actually, I love the detail going on here. This is some pretty gnarly stuff. I'm going to place this close to the camera. I think this is going to be pretty awesome. Now, I've already established or decided that, uh, whoa, what happened here? I like that it just disappeared. That's weird. Cool. Awesome. I'm going to scale this up. There we go. Wow, what is going on? Okay, well, I'm not going to use that as it anymore. Cool. Um... I already know that I have a little astronaut dude that I want to use, so I'm going to go ahead and get him and bring him to my shot. So where did I put that guy? Astronaut suit. Mesh. Mesh. There we go. I'm going to bring him in here. Now, why? Again, really annoyed that uh, assets should get spawned in midair instead of on the surface. Very irritating. Okay, so I'm actually really far from my camera here. I'm gonna move this guy. I'm gonna go into camera mode to help me out here. There we go. So I know that I want this this little dude. I'm gonna call him George. He looks like a George. And he's gonna be my subject of my shot. So where I want him in the scene, I'm not sure. I haven't decided yet. Put it to zero. Where is origin now? Okay, so that's origin. There we go. So I'm gonna leave him here. I'm gonna leave my camera here as well. <clears throat> Arthur Tasquin, William, what about your Patreon? I've been swamped with work uh, and totally caught by surprise um, by Unreal Engine 5 release. I was not expecting it. So Patreon's kind of taken a back burner for now. I've just been I've just been too busy to finish it up. So I'm almost done. And the way that Patreon works is that you kind of pay for the whole month. So it kind of renews every first of the month. So I kind of feel obligated to release it on the first of any given month. So I think it's going to be a July 1st release, uh, unfortunately. Uh, that's just kind of the way the Patreon works. Uh, so I apologize for, you know, I know I said I was hoping for a June 1st release, but that was before Unreal Engine 5 came out. Yeah, blindsided everyone. Uh, in Lives in the Woods game, can you please stop spamming? That's, um, that's a lot of chats. <laughs> And yes, there will be a Discord for the uh, for the Patreon. So Discord channel, Discord server is going to be for Patreon supporters only for the time being. Uh, mostly because a, I have no idea how you know or what involves. Yeah, I don't really know what, how moderating a Discord channel goes. So it's I want it to be you know t baby steps, start small, and you know eventually the Discord channel will be open to everyone. But for now, once Patreon launches, it's going to be uh, patrons only. So, okay, I'm going to set up my camera here. I'm going to change my focal length. I'm going to go to 85 mil because I really love 85. It is my favorite focal length. Oh, i got to delete this. There we go. Move the focal distance back here. There we go. Something like that. 
Now, obviously, the ground looks like crap. It's a big kind of pile of turd. It doesn't hold up very well up close. It looks awesome from afar, but not up close. So I will have to change that. <clears throat> so for now, this is kind of OK, I guess. Uh, again, I'm not really super happy with the direction this is going for now. So I'm just going to, oh, that's, that could be cool. Do have a kind of a cliff thing. I think a part of getting any shot to look good is experimenting. No artist ever kind of, I mean, it, it happens that some artists have like this vision in their head where, you know, they just kind of get it right on the first shot. That's not how it works for most people. I think getting a good, a nice looking environment, a nice looking shot uh, requires a lot of trial and error, trying different things, seeing what works, seeing what doesn't work. Um, just like I said earlier, just throwing a ton of mud at the wall and eventually something is going to stick. That's how it works in photography. Like if you go, for those of you who don't know me, I've you know been doing photography for, uh, what, 10, 12 years now? Why is my frame rate going bad? There we go. And, you know, photo photography is one of those things where like you just try different things and eventually... Why in the world is that happening? That's really... What is happening with this blueprint? Okay. Uh, yeah, there we go. Oh, I know why. I added it to the sequencer. That's why. Okay, that's weird. <clears throat> that's one thing about sequencer is if you're not careful, you can accidentally add assets to the sequence. I think with the S shortcut, so often when you're moving around and navigating your scene, the sequencer will add those assets to the sequence and things get weird. So just kind of keep that in mind. Okay, I'm gonna move. Whoa. See, ah, I'm so annoyed. Like placing stuff, placing blueprints is really frustrating. So I'm going to go to my camera and place them here instead. Hopefully that works. I'm going to drag and drop. Maybe, I don't know, maybe something like this here. There we go. <clears throat> so as you can see now, guys, just to kind of explain what I'm doing, I've set up my camera. I'm kit bashing. Uh, we have a whole um, ton of amazing assets that are made by Epic. And we've just got a very, very, very basic lighting setup done thanks to the environment light mixer that you can find in the window tab up here env light mixer click on that i've made a tutorial about it so if you don't really know how it works go check that out <clears throat> so again and sorry if i'm i'm not really paying attention to the questions guys there's uh there's just so many questions and i feel like if i read all the questions i'm never going to get anything done so i'm not intentionally trying to ignore you just so you know um, let's see now. Okay. So I'm going to go back and get some more assets. And let's see what I can get here. I like these big flat areas. So let's say this thing. Move this up. This can be a decent little ground thing. So I might use that as the ground for my dude. For George here. Uh, this is kind of pretty well detailed. It's not too bad. There we go. It's about there, there, like that. See how this looks in the shot. It's all about... That's the thing. When you're set dressing a shot, it's all about the shot. What happens outside the camera frustrum, what's outside the view that you're seeing in a shot, none of that matters. So, you know, if for anyone who's worked in film, anyone who's worked in VFX... Uh, you know that, like, you know, when you're making this beautiful shot for, you know, the next, you know, Avengers 7 or something, nothing, when you open up those Maya scenes or open up those levels, it, it just looks like crap because everything outside that camera angle doesn't matter, right? So, uh, yeah. So just to explain why I'm not focusing on, like, the haze and all the atmosphere stuff, I'm just kind of establishing the geo first. I place the lights initially just so that we can kind of see what we're doing. I'm establishing the landscape first, and then once I've established all that and that's done, I'm going to start playing with the lighting, play with the atmosphere, play with the post-process effects, 
I'm going to, you know, then I'm going to start looking at my render settings. Then I got to start rendering, you know, rendering my shots and thinking about how I'm going to tackle that color grading in DaVinci Resolve or Premiere or whatever your package of choice is. And um, yeah, I, I kind of went off on a tangent here, but for those of you who, who are familiar with photography, you don't always get the perfect photo on the first try. You try, you take many photos, you shoot once, twice, three times, 10 times. And just to give you an example, National Geographic photographers back in the day, back in the film day, they used to shoot maybe one photo out of, you know, a thousand was good. So you know, that's a lot of rolls of film that were just, you know, not good photos. Uh, one in a thousand was used or, and printed in their magazines. Now with digital, I think it's over 10,000 images are shot for just one that's printed. So just to give you an idea, uh, even some of the world's best artists, they just kind of spray and pray, right? Like I said, you sling mud at the wall, eventually something will stick. So again, now I'm just establishing my, my horizon and just playing around with seeing what works and what doesn't. I don't really like this. I kind of like, okay. And I'm going to go here. Oh my goodness, this is so big. It's just such a ridiculously big asset. It's crazy. There we go. Go back to my camera. There we go. You might even have to scale this up, actually. When you get to, like, very distant things or scenes there, uh, don't be afraid of just exaggerating the proportions and the scale. We all do it. I'm a big believer in the end result is the only thing that really matters. I don't care if something is like a fake or a hack or, you know, some, as long as it looks good, that's all that matters. <clears throat> Agastya Patel, I've tried real world scene, but how do you keep up with the proper scaling and positioning? Like I said, the end result is all that matters. Of course you want to try and keep things within a reasonable scale. Um, of course, that, that kind of goes without saying. But when it come, when things are arbitrary, like the size of a mountain, there's no real, like, how big is a mountain, right? There is no, you know, physically correct size for a mountain. It just, you know, a mountain is a mountain, right? So as long as it doesn't look ridiculous and as long as you get, you know, a good balance of high frequency and low frequency detail, you know, just scale this bad boy up to, like, you know, freaking huge. It doesn't really matter. Now, of course, if I exaggerate it like this, you'll notice... It starts to fall apart because, um, you know, the, the, the size of these things doesn't really make sense considering how far away it is, right? So the, the, the detail doesn't really match the distance and the size. So, of course, don't exaggerate it. Don't blow it up completely out of proportion. Uh, but as long as it feels, you know, as long as it feels okay, just try whatever. <clears throat> So now that we have something going on here, I kind of want to kind of emphasize maybe like a, a cliff face here. I want to have him kind of watching over a cliff. Uh, so how, what am I going to do here? So I'm going to move probably this rock here like that. So we can hopefully we can see it in the shot. Is this going to be our framing? I'm not sure. I uh, We'll we'll see how it works there, but I might have to change this rock asset because I'm not really a fan of like you know you can kind of see these uh, rocky the, the edge of the cliff doesn't look very convincing to me. Uh, I might have to rotate this like this or something. Yeah, I'm not I don't really like the jagged edges here. Like this doesn't look very realistic for now. It's fine. We're doing placeholders. It's okay. We're just kind of establishing a shot. So again. I'm not worrying about the lighting right now because the lighting's going to change. I just want to have lights in my scene so that I can see what I'm doing. We want to establish the geo and the shape and just the general look of our shot before we do anything else. That's the first thing we want to do. <clears throat> so, um, yeah, I think I need to establish some kind of something more interesting at the bottom here. This feels very empty and well it it is empty so let's go back to our shot and let's focus on the things that need a bit of love so we need a bit of love way down here right uh this kind of feels low poly and kind of bleh 
I think you guys can all agree that like you'll notice I don't really get that separation between this mountain here and the the one in the midground here. Lighting will help with this, right? So if I change the lighting, you'll see now. Okay, now we're actually getting that separation between this mountain and this mountain. So obviously, lighting can really help you. You know, can really help with your, your competition. Lighting is is essential to that. So sometimes it's a good way of you know it's good to play with your lights and just kind of try and see like okay this works. Um, and just kind of work on it from there. <clears throat> so for those of you wondering about the astronaut asset, I got this on the Epic Marketplace. If you just search for astronaut, um, he's there. I think he, there's a sale going on now, and so I got him there. Originally, he was orange. So in the, the asset itself, when I bought it, he was an orange. He had an orange suit. But, you know, an orange spaceman suit with orange rocks on an orange atmosphere or a red planet, um, it's not going to look very good. It's, it's kind of, everything's kind of all going to blend together. Uh, I made him white purely because I think the the white suit is going to contrast better with the orange environment, and that's really the the only uh, reason why I made him white. <clears throat> um, Briggle Smack, are you making a sunset? Maybe I haven't decided yet. That's kind of the beauty of art. Um, it's all subjective. Uh, I rarely make an environment with a pure, with a really clear idea of what I'm going to do. I try, I experiment, I try different things. Um, and it turns out, like, usually at, by the end, it's never really what I had in mind at the beginning. So, moving forward, let's go find some more assets here. Uh, let's see. I kind of like this. I'm just going to duplicate this and bring this down. Scale this bad boy, just so we have something filling up this empty void there. This is not really going to be in the camera, so that's why I'm not too worried about how it looks. Right, so like, okay, this oh, actually, it is in the camera, okay. So if I move this like that, yeah, I'm going to have to do some work here uh, with the bottom part here. I'm not sure what I'm going to do yet. So I'm going to delete that. Save. Why can't I say contains invalid data? That's interesting. I've never seen that before. Contained reference live stream camera does not exist. Huh? Cool. So I can't save my scene? Question mark? That's never happened to me before. Wow. <clears throat> no, I did not download the player models. But... Contains invalid data. Okay, can I save as? The current level add, I'm gonna be zero two. Okay, cool. So I can save a version two. That was weird. I've never seen that before. So, you know, uh, if um, if you guys had that issue, just kind of go to file up here and do save level as. No idea why I couldn't save for a while, dude. That was very very strange. Okay, going back now. Um. that bring it there like this right now i'm just trying to fill in this empty void at the bottom here just a matter of duplicating stuff and just filling in the blanks kit bashing is the best way to do this so things obviously don't make sense you know from this angle but it doesn't matter because we're just lighting for a shot we're creating a shot now of course my sequence disappeared there we go there we go. Now we're starting to get something a bit more interesting here. I need to find a better, more interesting cliff face for this thing here. So I'm going to go to my content browser and find a more interesting cliff. So what have we got here? Let's see. We've got this. I'm going to try and bring this in here. Okay. Whoopsie. I did not mean to do that. Damn it. Where's my astronaut? There we go. Uh, there we go. So it's important to when you create a camera in your sequence, uh, don't forget to keyframe the camera so that you don't lose the position. So I'm going to select my camera here and I'm going to hit the S key so that, you know, if I move my camera by accident, right? I'm like, oh shit, no, where did my camera go? 
you can just do this I play with the timeline and your camera will snap right back to where it was um, this is kind of um, you know important thing to do so now I'm gonna move this I'm gonna try and bring this here see how this looks this is some pretty deep this is pretty detailed I kind of like this this looks fine how does this look in the shot so obviously now you'll you'll start noticing how things you know lighting played the big role here there we go Something like that yeah There we go, something like that. That should be fine for now. Okay. I'm gonna, again, I'm gonna play with the lights a little bit. Do I want something like that or like this? What is casting the shadow on my dude? Oh, and here I was wondering why my dude was in the shadow. There's a humongous rock on top of him. That explains a lot. <clears throat> Sergey Sarachev, hey, well, this may be off topic, but if you want to ask high quality FG dust effects, is it something you can do in Unreal or is it uh, you would impose a nuke or with like a position pass? You can, I mean, honestly, there's no right answer here. Uh, Niagara is amazing and they've used Niagara in the Unreal Engine 5 playable demo. Uh, in the Valley of the Ancients, and Niagara looks fantastic. I think you're going to have more control in Nuke, doing it in post. Uh, but again, there's no it, whatever looks good, right? What if, which if for some people, uh, the effects in Unreal is not going to look realistic enough. You don't necessarily have enough control. Uh, so yeah, I don't really have a um, a good answer for you. I I personally like doing that kind of stuff in effect, like Houdini, and then comping that in with Nuke. Or resolve or whatever, but yeah, it's it's up to you. Tyler Corbin Frisch, does the astronaut mesh have bones or animation? Uh, yes, it does. So it actually has the same uh, skeletal hierarchy as the UE4 mannequin. So you can use a bunch of different anims there, which I'm gonna actually use right now. I gotta give him the idle or not idle. I'm gonna give him walk, and it's just so he has. You know, I can make him look sad maybe or something, or maybe idle, and idle is probably better. There we go. So now he looks a little bit sad, but you know, or he's looking down. Oh, that's kind of cool. So yeah, the space guy, the, the astronaut that I got from the Unreal Epic Marketplace is available uh, for download, and it comes skin ready for animation. So, okay, now we're... This mountain here bothers me. I don't really like how some of its shape. I'm we're lacking all that, that fine detail. This could be a nanite thing that's LODing because it's so far away. I'm not entirely sure. But now that we're we're starting to get a bit more of an interesting feel here. So I'm gonna. Now what's happening down here? I feel like we're losing. Ah, oh, okay, that might be some fog or something. Maybe. Let me see if there's fog in I don't think we have fog in here. I don't think I placed it yet. No, I did not. Okay. Before we go much further, I'm going to organize my scene a little bit because I am a big believer in keeping your scenes organized. Why? Why? That's annoying. Okay, so it seems to be my sequence file that's just not... Huh. Camera. That's really interesting. So it seems to, like it's having issues with my s sequence file. All right, well, hopefully Unreal doesn't crash. <clears throat> so, uh, I'm not sure what to do about this, actually. I'm gonna go save current level as, I guess. I'm gonna do a version three. And then open up sequencer again. There we go. I think I have to do this every time. That's annoying, but 
What can you do? Show grid, and we'll make grid to show up. Okay, so next up, I'm going to add some fog. <clears throat> Mr. Dinko, hey, how did you get the ancient content into your own project? I'm actually using the ancient uh, valley project itself, and I just created a new scene. It's really as simple as that. So I'm going to go over fog up here. I'm going to add some exponential height fog, and you'll see, like, whoa, things are crazy. Oh, yes, I got distracted, as always. I'm going to organize my scene. Create this. I'm going to create a landscape, I guess. And I'm going to create everything that has to do with the light and select these and put these in a folder called lights. Did they fix the outliner? They did not fix the outliner. Man. I really was hoping that Unreal would have fixed the outliner for Unreal Engine 5, but I guess that was too much to ask for. Everything is still in alphabetical order. I really want to be able to organize my outliner the way I want it to. Uh, okay, so, uh, obviously this looks terrible. I need to play around with the, uh, whoa, uh, where is it? Where's the fog? There we go. Turn this down. Now, the first thing you should know about working with, uh, fog. What the heck? Come on. Oh, there we go. So... When working with fog, when you place the, your uh, exponential height fog, so I got it right here, just so you, I'm gonna move this over. When you select your exponential height fog in your scene, you'll notice the whole bottom of the hemisphere becomes kind of bluish white. When working with the sky atmosphere, so we have a sky atmosphere in here, right? So if I hide this, we, ha we have our sun and blue skies. I'm gonna hide the clouds. So this is our atmosphere, the sun and the horizon there. And if I hide this, you'll see we don't see atmosphere. So when you work with the exponential height fog and the sky atmosphere, it's really important that the fog in scattering color here is set to black. And I believe the in scattering, I think, sorry, the directional in scattering as well should be set to black. I'll explain to you why in just a second. So I'm going to um, increase the fog density here, just exaggerate it for, for effect here. Now you'll notice everything, it doesn't, yeah, I'm making it intense for a reason. So you'll see it doesn't take on the color of the sky, right? So you'll notice that, you know, as the sun gets closer to the horizon, the whole sky changes color, but the fog doesn't uh, doesn't take on the color of the sky. Why is that? That's because the fog and scattering color that we see at the bottom here, okay, is set to bl like a bright blue with a very bright value. And the fog and scattering color, all these things are additive, okay? So they add on top of each other. So that's why you should set this to black Okay, and I'm going to set the directional in scattering color also to black. And now you'll notice that, see how we look at the bottom, the bottom half of our frame here. Notice how now it's taking on the color of our sunset. Okay, does everyone see that? This is why it's important to set the in scattering colors to black, because like I said, they're um, additive. So now our fog takes on the color of our sun in our sky. So this is super, you know, it's really good to know. Of course, if your art direction requires you to have a different color that's brighter than black, that's fine. That's totally okay. There's no right or wrong answer here. I'm just trying to, you know, show you the good practices, the things that, you know, really how it works and, you know, just how I do things. So now, like I said, we got our fog takes on the color. If I hide the fog, right, you'll notice, you know, now it goes from totally pure black here to we have something and you'll see around the sun there's like this big kind of halo not halo but big uh, gradient and now we've got some fog in our scene i'm going to go back to my camera and you'll see whoa this is starting to feel a little bit more martian because it takes on the proper color of the sun so obviously this is way too strong and too dark i don't want i'm not going to make it uh, a total sunset come on Like that. Now we get a bit. Like that. So again, lots of trial and error. Um, I think I might hide the fog for now because I'm not. Okay, I got clouds there. 
Yeah, so the fog is adding quite a bit of depth to our scene. We're getting a bit more interesting haze here. I might have to tweak that value because it's still a little bit too strong for my taste, but I think you guys get the idea. <clears throat> so, now let's see. Okay, so the stream's almost been going on for an hour now. I think I'm gonna add maybe a little bit more detail in the mid-ground here and maybe the background, just a very, very different background. And then I'm gonna start focusing on more, a little bit more on lighting, a little bit more on some of the atmosphere settings that I wanna use, because this right now still looks like Earth. This does not look like Mars anywhere, doesn't look anywhere close to Mars yet. So we're just going to uh, duplicate this, see what I can do to kind of make the, the background a little bit more spicy. This looks not nah, not good. No bueno. How does this look in the background? Again, lots of trial and error, playing with different settings, and I really have no idea which which direction I'm going to go with with the shot yet. Whoops. That no, I don't really like. I really wish I had more a more mountainous shape. Um, it's very possible I might go make my own real quick because right now like you'll, you'll notice like the tops of these mountains are all very flat it's very grand canyon-esque uh that's not really the direction i want to go i don't necessarily want to recreate the grand canyon i just want to make something that feels a little bit more out otherworldly so let's see yeah something like that Move this out of the way. <clears throat> yeah, I totally agree. Don't worry about the clouds, guys. I'm going to adjust this properly for now. Um, I'm going to try and make them a little bit more wispy because, you know, there are clouds on Mars, and like you say. Um, but then again, I am i don't know anything about Mars. I'm not a NASA uh, engineer. I don't really... <laughs> yeah. So I'm just going to try and go with whatever looks good. And we will art direct these clouds a little bit more. Um... But now, let's see, let's see what else we got here. I'm just trying to find some interesting silhouettes here. So I'm going to find maybe something with an interesting shape. And yeah, I might just open up Gaia and make a very quick mountain or something. Scrolling through here. It's all, kit bashing is all about finding the right pieces of the puzzle, right? So I'm gonna move this way down my scene. That seems, I'm not sure how big this is, but come on. There we go. Scale this up and just kind of send this way down in the background. Again, this might not be the right scale, but because in the distance it's so hazy, it's so out of focus, it's probably going to be out of focus. Uh, so I really just want to get an interesting silhouette in the background for now. I'm going to scale this up. Let's see how this looks. Yeah, I'm not super convinced this, is, this might look a little bit weird there. Sometimes I just, it's just a matter of getting an interesting shape in the back. Oh, what happens if I rotate this? Uh, this could work, actually. No, not like that. Again, trial and error, seeing what works best. Whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. Sequencer, move this back. There we go. Again, sorry if I'm, if it feels like I'm ignoring you guys in the chat. I'm not. I just, you know, 
if I if I read all the questions, I'm never gonna get anything done. Maybe move something like this and kind of open up. Uh, maybe opening up this um, this valley a little bit might help. So there's a lot of um, trial and error here, as I said. Getting some layers in here. Might have to move this guy back even more. Way, way, way more. Something like that, maybe. All right. <clears throat> All right. So now just to kind of help make this feel a little bit more Mars-like, what can we do? Let's go take a look at Google one more time. And I'm going to, you know, just search for uh, Mars atmosphere. Cannot type tonight. And... I get it from the surface. I I didn't really want to see it from the from the from space surface atmosphere. Google will fix it. So again, it, it's always tricky finding reference because you know you don't really know what's you know made like an artist impression versus actual photos of Mars. But I mean, just taking a look at this which looks very, very, very cool. If I just look at Mars sunset or sunrise again, we got a lot of my scattering here. We got a lot of this kind of stuff happening. The blue sunset feels really weird. I don't think I'm going to make a blue sunset. I kind of kind of make it feel a bit more warmish than that, but I do love this. Like notice how this looks really cool. It feels very otherworldly. Um, <clears throat> so... I love that kind of weird scattering. It just looks like the atmosphere is very thick. It looks like it, you know, I, I love this look that it has. And fortunately, we can replicate that pretty easily in Unreal. So let's dig in. So I'm going to go back to my camera mute mode here. And I'm going to lower the sun just a little bit for effect. And I'm going to hide the fog for now. Okay, that should be fine. Now, in the sky atmosphere, okay, this is where things get really interesting. In the sky atmosphere, we have a whole series of other settings uh, right here called atmosphere-my. And that's my scattering. And this is where we're going to start making things feel very cool. So we're going to play, play with this here. And you'll notice, like, whoa, now, by just adjusting one single slider, now we're getting, you get, you, we're getting a very similar feel to that... Um, to that Mars sunset here, right? Now, whether or not it's an actual fake or, or real sunset, this is still kind of a look that feels very cool. It, I think you had a similar sunset in, you know, uh, was it not Interstellar, but um, Blade Runner. You just kind of get this really gnarly, dusty feel in the sky, right? And that's kind of what we're, we're getting here. So that's what I love about, in the sky atmosphere, we got the Maya scattering. We can play around with this. I'm gonna move the sun down a little bit more. And now we're getting something that looks really gnarly. And uh, I'm going to go, I can remove the camera run. Now we're seeing like these sky, these clouds. We haven't changed the clouds, but things feel way more, uh, you know, wispy. Even though the clouds themselves, before we tweaked them, were just, you know, very billowy, for lack of a better word. So my scattering is a really awesome way to just make your shots feel very different. Play around with it. <clears throat> so I'm going to move this back here. I'm going to move the sun again. There we go. So I hope you guys got that. I get you got the good idea of how to art direct your skies a little bit. Sky atmosphere. I'm going to do it one more time. By default, it's set to something like this. So this feels like, you know, a very uh, late afternoon in California or something in Southern California, billowy clouds we see, and just with one single slider in the my scattering of the sky atmosphere, we can just play with this and boom, suddenly we just get this a very different feel here. Obviously you, you need to use it tastefully, but I kind of like the direction that this is going, even though it's a very, you know, it's kind of an artsy shot, right? It's obviously not... Um, there's nothing super impressive about it. There's no crazy detail. 
But, you know, it's one of those things that it's just a pretty picture. And that's kind of what we're going for today. Today's live stream is not about some crazy tutorial about how to achieve so-and-so. This is really just me kit bashing and having a bit of fun. So, again, if I just, yeah, I'm going to leave the clouds in there for now. I don't think I really need to touch the clouds that much because these clouds kind of feel nice. They're very wispy, but it just adds a little bit of extra detail in our sky, and I, I do I do like this a lot. So I might bump up the uh, skylight a little bit, though. Whoops. Like that, and maybe... Now, the, the one thing I don't like about this shot is that so now everything feels very dark, right? I might have to... Um, <clears throat> I, I might have to, you know, what the word... You know, brighten this up a little bit, but yeah. Um, kit bashing means just basically taking a bunch of different kit pieces, a bunch of different you know assets. So, for example, like this mountain and that mountain, and just kind of bashing them together to create a bigger mount mountain. That's really all that means. It sounds very violent. I agree. Scorp, hi man, nice to see you. Thanks for joining. So, uh, let's see. Ganja Farmer, do you know how to make less clouds? Well, I mean, I could always just tweak the material of my volumetric clouds or just hide them, right? I could just have the clouds off. So that's, I mean, did that answer your question, I guess? Um, so I'm going to play with my sky a little, a little bit, and I'm going to... What happens, again, lighting is all about trial and error, and I'm going to try a few new things. There's no right or wrong settings to use. Of course, you want to use like a perfectly physically based act, physically based lighting. There are some settings that you should use, but for my sake, I like playing around with values that are not necessarily physical because real life is not always pretty. <clears throat> so, just bumping the skyline intensity just to bring a little bit more detail to our foreground here, and maybe if I bump up the intensity of my sky. Something like that. I mean, another alternative, just to give you guys an example, another thing I could do is I could leave my lighting setting at default, so a skylight intensity scale of 1, and my directional light to 10, and I can just play uh, with the exposure here. Right? So that's another way to do it. Um, yeah, there's no right or wrong answer. Unreal Cinema, jumping in the stream a bit late, but your stuff always looks so amazing. Look forward to going back and watching your whole process on this. Thanks so much, man. I appreciate that. Again, for everyone, the, my live streams are always available for everyone to see later. Uh, so if you missed the stream or you missed something, don't feel bad. Not a problem. Oh, I kind of like, just see, just moving the camera like this, um, I suddenly like this composition a little bit better. Uh, so I might just leave that like that whoops that's not what i meant to do come on where'd my son go Arr. there we go where's my son there we go move something like this kind of like the having the sun sort of behind the cloud just slightly i wish i could rotate my directional light a little bit now where is my directional light I'm going to move it somewhere more in the camera so I can rotate it. There we go. And now, hey, what? There we go. So I like having the sun sort of only half visible, like it's sort of hidden behind a cloud. I think it just kind of adds a little bit more mystery to the scene. <clears throat> now, I think I'm going to try and add a little bit of heat haze. Um, the heat, for those of you who noticed in the Valley of the Ancients demo, the heat haze, like the kind of shimmering effect, that was all done in the post-process material. So I'm going to select my post-process volume in my outliner, and I'm going to add post-process material. So we got post-process material in our post-process volume, and I'm going to add one. And there's a material that's called, I'm going to type, Haze, I think it's called heat haze. Okay, so there's several different types, but let's add it. There we go. I'm not sure if you guys can tell in the stream, but there is a subtle amount of haze going on in there. So I haven't actually made this post-process material myself, just so you know. Um, it's uh, it's done by Epic, and you can get it in the 
uh, Valley of the Ancients demo that's part of Unreal Engine 5, the one that weighs 100 gigabytes. So, um, yeah, I'm going to go find that again. So, does it so the post-process material is really just this. Okay, and post-process materials can do a multitude of effects. You can do a whole bunch of stuff in there. You can do um, heat haze, you can do lens effects, you can do lens flares, you can do vignetting. There's so much you can do. I'm, I'm not even going to get into that. But there's a guy on ArtStation called Alec Tucker who made a blog post on all the series of, um, of post-process materials you can make, and he kind of goes in-depth on how to make them. So Alec Tucker on ArtStation Go check him out. He's awesome. Great artist. Super nice guy. I had a brief chat with him. He's worth following. Um, I'll include the link to that in... Uh, you know what? I'm going to go search it up right now. i got to find it for you guys because Alec is a great guy and he deserves some recognition. Let me find it. So, I like Tucker Art Station. Blog. So, go follow this guy here. And so, yeah. He made a guide called Cinematic Post Processing Tips and Tricks. Um, go follow this dude on ArtStation, and in his blog post section, uh, he is, he makes a bunch, he tells you about how to make post-process materials from scratch, and, you know, different vignetting types, he, you know, barrel distortion, bloom, different kinds of bloom, how to tweak things, so definitely go check him out, um, he's worth following, all right? So, just to kind of show you guys, whoopsie, I did not mean to do that. There we go. So now that we have our heat haze in here, um, it is subtle, but we do have a little bit of heat haze. And now I think the last thing I kind of want to do is maybe art direct my clouds a little bit better. Um, hmm. So we're going to probably, I think, you know what we're going to do? We're going to do what I did in my tutorial from last week on how to art direct volumetric clouds. Um, just to kind of show you guys one more time how it's done. So we're going to go to the content browser, and in order for this to work, you need to make sure that in the plugins, you've got volumetrics enabled. Okay, so if you search for volumetrics in the plugin, make sure the volumetric plugin is enabled. Uh, it's pretty awesome. Once that's done, we're going to, there's one more thing you need to do, and that is in the settings, you need to make sure that show engine content and show plugin content is enabled. It's checked here. And then we're going to go to all the way down. You're going to get a whole bunch of more folders in the content browser. You're going to go all the way down until you get to V, where it said volumetric content. We're going to go to tools, cloud compositing, blueprints. And we're going to create BP cloud mask and a, is that it? Yeah, BP cloud mask, BP cloud mask generator. These two, BP cloud mask object and BP cloud mask generator. I'm going to make these thumbnails a little bit bigger so we can see more clearly. There we go. These two things, we're going to drag and drop these in here. Now you might be wondering where they are. I'm going to select this. Where is this thing? Uh, one second. Okay, so, so it is there. Why is this? Whoa, okay. Sometimes it shows up like, I'm not sure if this is an unreal thing, but sometimes the, the, where you place things in your scene, when you drag and drop objects into your scene, things just don't show where they're supposed to. So, okay, so there it is. Uh, okay, there, there's the bad boy. So that's, this is the actor I'm looking for. Cloud mask object. I'm gonna move this up like this. And yes, it's normal that it is huge. Don't worry. I'm actually going to uh, lift up my sun here and change the sky atmosphere back to default just for the sake of art directing these clouds. Once that's done, then we can go back to our nice little Mars sky that we had. Okay? So I'm going to place this here. And I'm going to select my volumetric cloud actor. And we need to change the material here. So I'm going to go back to my content browser in the volumetrics content folder. We're going to go to content and go to sky, maps, uh, no, not maps, sorry, materials. And we're going to find a whole series of other volumetric cloud materials here. 
again, don't worry, guys. I made a tutorial about this last week. So go watch the video on art directing volumetric clouds. I'll include it in the link in the description below after the stream ends. So you can watch it at your own pace. Okay, so don't worry if I'm going too quickly. I made a whole tutorial on this. So we're going to go find, I want the billowy for now. Just because I know it works. So I'm going to grab this guy. Move it there. And now... In theory, I should be able to start art directing some clouds here. There we go. See how they're showing up in the in the sky? There we go. Now we got this cloud showing up in the sky there. Now, with this actor, we can kind of place clouds wherever the crap we want. And that's awesome. Obviously, this requires a little bit of tweaking, as you see, because this cloud does not look like a cloud that belonged on Mars. Obviously. <clears throat> and, uh, yeah, so I know about clicking the F button, but sometimes the assets don't really, uh, you know, show up at the right place. That's my issue right now. So going back here, there we go. So obviously this is pretty, quite big. Move this back here, and you'll. There we go. Now we're starting to be able to see what our heck our clouds are looking like. Now, why does it disappear? Oh, I know why. Okay, that's a bit of a bummer, but I think I might be able to fix that. I guess the distances I'm using here are very big, so that's probably why this is happening. That's fine. No worries. We'll figure figure this out. I'm gonna duplicate this, something like that, and I'm gonna change the noise on this thing. Noise settings. Set this to one or something, just to break it up. And in the volumetric cloud, we're gonna play around with the height. And this is how you can kind of art direct the position of your clouds a little bit better. Now this may actually not end up looking, this, I'm not actually a huge fan of how these are looking. I think I preferred how they looked before, so I may actually omit these entirely. Again, this is kind of part of the process. It's all about experimenting. It's very rare for an artist to get everything right on the first try. No matter how good you are, no matter how many years of experience you've been, you've had in the, in the industry, there's always, you know, there's always a trial and error process when you are making a shot. <clears throat> and yeah, I mean, Mars does have clouds. If you just search for uh, Mars clouds, they're more wispy. They're not billowy like, like I have here, but if I just search for clouds on Mars, there is stuff in the atmosphere um, as you can kind of see here. <clears throat> but yeah, it's it's very subtle. So don't I won't I don't think I'm actually going to keep this because I'm not a huge fan of how they look. But deep, keep in mind, we're not really going to see the clouds that much because of the my scattering, as we I showed you guys earlier. So if I can go back to my sky atmosphere, I'm going to scale up the my scattering, and now, yeah, these clouds look a little ridiculous. So I'm actually not a fan, I'm not going to use these at all. But still, I'm kind of glad that I showed you how you can art direct your clouds um, and just remind you to do a tutorial about it. So I'm going to revert this material here and just use the default cloud material. They're a bit more wispy, and I think that just works better for... Um, come on. There we go. That works better for this type of environment. Now where... There we go. And directional light... Yeah, there we go. <clears throat> Something like that, maybe. And I'm going to bump up. I'm going to do like a 75 Lux. Maybe make the light color a little bit reddish. Tiny bit. Just subtle, just to kind of cheat it a little bit. There we go. 
Now, we, we don't even, interestingly enough, uh, we don't even see the background mountains that I play, so I'm wondering if there's a way to tweak the intensity of that sky atmosphere setting that I just changed earlier. There should be. Ah, something like that, maybe. Nah. Let me play with my clouds. Again, all with the trial and error. We're playing with different settings here, playing with different values. Um, it's always an experimental thing. And I think that's what differentiates, you know, a, a good art director from, you know, just, just a, a bad artist. It's just an art director that's going gonna, gonna to try different things. But he's going to know when to stop. He's going to know what generally looks good, what, what feels good, what feels bad. Um, and that's, that's the whole thing. You sling mud at the wall and eventually something is going to stick, but you need to know when it sticks. Only you can know that. Uh, now let's see. Directional light. And I, I'm going to tweak the clouds because I, I don't want the clouds obscuring that sun quite as much. There we go. Something like that. Maybe tweak the sky atmosphere a little bit because that is dense. So you can kind of control in the settings. There's like uh, there's an art direction folder or section of the sky atmosphere at the very bottom, and you can kind of control how intense the, that effect is. If I hide these, ah, uh, there we go. Right. So now we can kind of tweak the intensity of it, but still have a decent amount of control and still get the same feel that we were having. Now, why is this looking a little bit weird? We have just one mountain in the background here that's kind of messing with our fog. I'm not entirely sure why. So let's go play around with that and see what's going on. Yeah, I think something's odd is, is happening. Let's see now. Come on. Yeah, you know what? I think I'm going to probably leave it like that, and then I'm going to select my distant mountains and move them closer. Just so we do get those layers, because I, I did like the layering effect that we got, that we had earlier. Something like that. And even if you don't see far, that's okay. We still want, just, want to get some depth in our scene with the help of these layers. And when I say layers, I mean like that you can kind of see like Mountain 1, you can kind of see the, the silhouette of Mountain 2, that sort of thing. So it's all about you know playing with the the sky atmosphere and getting a look that works for you. We're starting to get a pretty cool looking shot here. Again, this is not at all the the shot that I had in mind when I started, but you know that's how it goes. Christian Eichner, something I struggle with is realistic rain for such a photo scene. Have you got any tutorials that, for that topic, or are you planning on doing some? It is more convenient to add it in Photoshop and post. Uh, I'm actually working on trying to get some decent looking rain on my scene, as, kind of right now on a side project. Um, for now, realistic. I haven't seen very photo real looking rain in Unreal Engine. I've seen there are lots of rain plugins. There's lots of rain materials you can add, and it doesn't look photo real and it's much easier to add in Photoshop. I'll be totally honest with you for now, but I'm trying to find a way to get it to look real. I'm using some Houdini Sims and stuff um, to really push it to the next level because right now it just looks very gamey. So yeah. <clears throat> so now the only thing that I would like to do I'm going to select this guy here. I kind of want a bit of a rim like There is some sunshine going on here, so I might cheat it with... Whoa, performance is weird. I might cheat it with a little rect light here. Uh, 
with the help of um, what's it call it lighting channels I'm gonna add this guy here and I'm gonna see how this looks in the shot I want I want to kind of highlight the rim of my dude just a little bit just to get a bit more for the to pop out from the background a little bit but it it might not be necessary to make this bigger though let's call this a 256 by 256 make it a little bit more red <clears throat> something like that just a little bit of a something to make it a f you know to, to, I'm not sure you guys can see but just get a little bit more of a rim light on our scene right character right here uh, let's see. Okay, sorry if I'm related. What frame rate would you use for Archvid videos? Is cinematic 24fps better than the smooth 16 in your opinion? Um, honestly, there's no right or wrong answer to that. I think it depends on what your needs are. If you're trying to make something that feels like a movie, go 24fps. But if you're, if you're trying to make something that looks just good for your client, 60 might be better. Um, I think it's really up to you and your client to decide. And as Chris Hill says here, it's 24 FPS is really mostly about the motion blur than anything else. So yeah, there's no right or wrong answer to that. Personally, I love 24 FPS. I think that's the way to go. But you know, it, for our choice, it's a little bit different. So I'm gonna move this background mountain right here. Now I would love to add some effects stuff, like some, some dust and some wind and you know, some more, yeah, some more dust effects. But A, I'm not an effects artist. And B, this pack, or the the Valley of the Ancients demo, doesn't really come with any decent effect stuff. It has amazing effects in the playable demo, but they use a very advanced type of, like, you know, painting system that I'm not very familiar with. I don't really know how they did it. So, yeah, unfortunately. <clears throat> Oh, okay. Thank you so much for letting me know, guys. Uh, I'm not sure why the stream is suddenly very laggy. Give me one second. Okay, I'm back. I'm just going to try and make sure what the heck is happening with the stream. Not entirely sure why it's suddenly very laggy. Not receiving enough video. Hmm. <clears throat> yeah, okay, I'm working on it, guys. Why is this happening? What? All right, um, that's very strange. I'm not sure what's going on here. Okay, let me know if that's better, guys. What the heck? I might do file. Okay. Cool. Yeah, I think uh <clears throat> I think what happened is that uh Unreal was just affecting my GP my GPU too much all of a sudden out of the blue. So that was weird. I'm relaunching Unreal Engine five now, but uh yeah, I don't think I saved in a while, so hopefully Oh, well, it saved everything. Cool. Thanks so much for letting me know, guys. I appreciate that. <clears throat> I still don't really know what happened, though. It's YouTube is still telling me that the stream is very laggy. Um... Yeah, it's very possible to have a memory leak or something. Okay, let me go back to my cinematic here. 
And okay, so it turned like it saved everything. Um, let me know if it's still lagging though. It's very possible that it is. And I think, you know what, that's probably a good a sign for me to say that there's a time for a Q&A, a little Q&A session before we move on to the stream for tonight. Um, I blame UE5 for the stream behaving so weirdly. Yeah, that's very strange. Okay, good. Thanks so much, guys. Okay, so, yeah, uh, Q&A session. Go ahead and ask all your questions that you want to ask now. Um, I think we're going to call it a night for now due to technical issues um, that I'm not entirely sure what happened. So go ahead, and if you have any questions, now's the time to ask. So what are the specs for UE5? UE5 recommends having at least a 2080 Super and 64 gigs of RAM. That's a recommended spec, but you can use, I think, all the way out down to like a 1080. Um, the more RAM you're going to have, the better. Uh, MR, yes, they can absolutely run this with an RTX 3060, but uh, 8 gigabytes of RAM is a little bit low. Death, any chance you'll do a tutorial on the Master Chief scene, especially the walk cycle? It looks absolutely incredible. I'm, I'm working on it, actually. It's on the list. Um, I have a lot of things that I need to kind of work on uh, before I get to that, but it's definitely in the works. Let's see. Uh, Akash Dimri, how can I get dust and smoke in this scene? Dust and smoke, you can buy lots of packs on the Epic Marketplace. So, um, yeah, that's one way to, to get them. Fine. So, okay, open up the Marketplace here. You go to the Marketplace. In theory, you can go ahead and find... Come on. Marketplace. You can find lots of stuff on the Marketplace up here. If I search for, you know, like, dust effects... Uh, you'll have lots of effects you can download there. Um, that may be good enough for your needs. Uh, Duffy, why does Bridge not import displacement for surfaces? Uh, displacement doesn't really work with uh, Unreal Engine 5 so far. We, I've had issues with it. Uh, I think it's a Nanite thing. So, yeah, displacement is not really supported in Unreal Engine 5 right now. So that's kind of a bummer. Uh, let's see now. Okay, have they added color coding into the outliner? I don't think so. I haven't tried, but no, it doesn't seem like they did. I, I'm so fed up with the outliner in Unreal. It's really bad. Everything is alphabetically sorted. There's no way to color code things. Everything opens up the moment you click on something. It's really bad. So I really hope that with the final release of UE5, they fix this, but... You know, now that I'm seeing it in UE5 now, I'm not holding my breath. Uh, let's see. A tutorial for AOVs in Unreal? That's a great tip. That's a great suge suggestion, actually, because AOVs are kind of iffy um, right now in Unreal. Like, they have some basic AOVs, but they don't have that many good ones that you need. Uh, subject value. How do you feel about RT being deprecated? Um, I'm not too worried about it. I know, you know, people are wondering, like, oh, how can ray tracing be deprecated? I'm pretty sure that Epic is working on something better under the hood. They're not just going to strip a feature away out of the engine just because they feel like it. Uh, Ganja Farmer. Do you know if Glass works in UE5? No, it doesn't. It doesn't work in UE5 right now. Or not with Lumen. You can, if you don't use Lumen, uh, you can use Translucency. But, Yeah. <clears throat> Toxic Produce, how long have you been doing game development? Uh, I worked in games for about five years before I started working in the film industry. So I've been working in game for five years and in film for like, what, five or six years, I think? Yeah, it's been a while. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, Cosimo Goya, Gioia. what's the difference between Nanite and Full Ray Tracing? There's, full Ray Tracing is more of a lighting thing, Nanite is a Geo thing. So Nanite is virtualized Geo, um, but yeah, so it's two di totally different things. Uh, let's see. Whoa, goodness, so many questions, guys. Okay, let's see if I can answer all these. Um, Oslet L, do you think Displacement is going to be back in the final release? Yes, I think so. Definitely. I think there's no way around it. You need Displacement for your scenes, right? <clears throat> So, uh, let's see. Big Martian, please answer. 16 gigabytes RAM, 2.71 gigabytes CPU, NVIDIA 920M graphics card. Can I run this engine, please answer? Uh, you're going to have a hard time. I don't think you're going to be able to run Unreal Engine 5 on a laptop. Or not that specific laptop. An i5 is pretty old. Um, a 920M is also very old. Let's see, Killer Sneak, isn't Lumen the full GI thing and Nanite the high poly import? Yes, that's correct. So Nanite is all about the geo and Lumen is the lighting. Uh, Kate Rose, have you thought about working with Unreal Engine YouTubers like Locher Films, Unreal Cinema, or Cinematic Captures? Uh, yes, absolutely. Um, I talk to Peter at Locher Films, you know, regularly. He's a great guy, so maybe we'll have a collaboration sometime. I'd love to. Uh, Reek, QA, do you have any recommended ground fog UE assets uh, for ground fog? Hmm, that's a good question. Usually I probably make that myself uh, with some localized fog, but that's a great suggestion for a tu tutorial. Race off, no, I'm not Norwegian. Yeah, yeah, but not again. So, no, I'm not Norwegian. So, uh, Tobias Nilsson, is Nanite scalable resolution-wise? Um, you know what? I can't really answer you that because I don't really know yet. I'm still learning Nanite myself. A proper tutorial is going to come out for that um, it's within a week or two. <clears throat> Sudais Muhammad, why is Lumen screen space like? It's not really screen space, actually. Uh, some things are, but some things are not. Lumen is kind of new tech. It's a very weird piece of tech. Um, I think people are still kind of figuring out how it works. Uh, so let's see now. Um, I'm going to answer a question for another few minutes, and then I think we're going to call it a night, guys. Um, it, it's definitely easiest for me to like see your questions if you go with Super Chats, because there's so many people writing, it's really hard to, to see. Let's see. Um... Squad FPV. I'm, it's nearing the end of the stream, yeah. Uh, uh, Leandro, where exactly did you get those assets again? This is part of the um, hidden or ancient valley pack that comes with Unreal Engine Five. It's a hundred gigabytes of assets, so you know you can definitely find it. Them, you can find them all there. Amistan Sadiq, Lumen does work well with interiors, yes. There's a certain amount of, you know, trial and error involved, but it does work pretty well. If you look at any of the Archviz forums, uh, Lumen has been pretty good. Rothman Slot, how do you find the Lumen performance on the 2060 Super? It runs quite well on my 2080 Ti. I love Lumen. I think Lumen does work very good, surprisingly well, considering I'm on a 2060. Uh, let's see... Question, does your MRQ tutorial preset still relevant for UE5? Thank you. Uh, that's a very good question. Um, for the most part, yes. It, some of the console commands may be different because it does use, some of the console commands are ray trace based. Uh, but with that being said, the rest of that movie render queue tutorial still applies here. So I can actually do that right now. If I go open up the movie render queue, uh, where is it? Right here. And I can just add my shot here, so I can just, what's this? Live stream camera, add my sequence there, just add my, all everything you need to know here. The movie render queue 
behave the same way in Unreal Engine 5 as it did in UE4. So my tutorial from UE4 is applicable here for sure. Uh, Tom Lasada, where are you from? I'm from Canada. I hail from uh, a smaller city just outside Montreal. So I'm French Canadian. Question. Hi, have you encountered the problem with static meshes no longer rendering their materials when Nanite is enabled? Uh, I haven't had that specific problem, but I've had meshes disappearing entirely. So, yeah, I'm not informed. I don't know Nanite well enough to know what caused that exactly. <clears throat> Unreal Cinema, I'm having issues with lumen and the emissive lighting. When the emissive source is further away from my cine camera, it stops emitting light. Any advice? I've also noticed that I've had the same issue. I think there's a solution. There's a setting somewhere. I think it's a project setting. But I'm not entirely sure. I haven't managed to fix that myself yet. So sorry. Let's see now. Beginner Blender here. Should I use Unreal? Is it easier to get into? I think Blender is an amazing tool. Uh, um, Unreal also has an amazing tool set. They have different, I mean, Blender on its own. I want to learn Blender. I don't know Blender at all, but I need to learn it because it's amazing. Um, whether it's better than Unreal, I think that depends on your needs. Unreal's strength is that it has mega scans and, excuse me, and a whole bunch of, has the documentation that comes with it. It's amazing. I'm not in a position to tell you that Unreal is better than Blender. So I hope that answers your questions. Uh, let's see. Roughness Slot. Is there a good place outside of YouTube to check out the stuff you have made with UE? Uh, I guess my art station, probably. Uh, but most of the Unreal stuff I've made in Unreal have been on my YouTube channel. Okay. Tony Leonard, love your work, Will. I love to not fit into today, but maybe next time you could tell us about green screen compositing in UE using Composure. Yeah, I think that's definitely on the list, so I'll definitely make a Composure tutorial eventually. Regulus Storm, thank you so much for the super chat, man. I appreciate that. Uh, ordered a 24 core Threadripper, 64 gigs of RAM, RTX 3080. What else do I need? Honestly, I think you're good to go. Thread Threadrippers are amazing. A 3080 is going to perform exceptionally well. Um, I don't think you need two 3080s. So, yeah, I mean, congratulations on the new build. That's an amazing piece to have. And congrats on getting your hand on a 3080. Those are hard to find. <clears throat> okay, let's answer a few more questions before we call it a day. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Can we paint directly textures inside Unreal 5? No, Unreal Engine 5 is not made for texture painting. You're gonna probably going to want like use a Quixel Mixer for that, or Substance Painter, or something along those lines. Uh, let's see now. Uh, I'm just going to make a quick animation here. Just something like this. Real quick, just so to, to we have something to show for the end of the stream. Come on. Why is this not working? There we go. Animate this camera, something like that. Go to last frame, do something like this. And now we're gonna just fix that curve. We're gonna make this linear. And where's this linear thing? Come on. There we go. This might be a little bit too fast, so I'm gonna make this longer. And move this like this. There we go. <clears throat> All right, sorry, questions again. Uh, would you make a tutorial for making interiors in UE5? Uh, I already have. Did the tutorial on my channel about exactly that topic, lighting interiors. 
Regalus Storm, again, thank you so much for the tipper chat. Working on a television series and don't know a third thing about Unreal, are you available for side work? I'm, I'm unfortunately not available for side work right now. Um, I'm just way too swamped with, you know, three jobs at the same time, so sorry. Okay, um, I want this to loop. There we go. Uh, let's see, when will we see you making interior scene? Again, I've already made a bunch of tutorials on interior lighting. There's two live streams about this, and I've also made a tutorial on GPU light mass. So, yeah, unless you're speaking about Unreal Engine 5, um, then that could be an idea for another live stream. Let's see. <clears throat> How many years until pasteurizing in new games come to fruition? That's a very good question. Uh, it's a little bit impossible to say right now. Let's see now. Okay, whoa. So for those of you wondering how I did linear frames, um, I just selected my camera, click on this little button right here in a curve editor, this opens the sequencer curve editor. So my transform of my camera, I can select my keys and just right here, we've got the linear interpolation. All right. So I think, uh, I think that's it guys. I think, uh, you know, we've kind of established something really quickly tonight. Uh, thanks so much for watching guys. I hope you learned a little something and you know what, if you have any questions, hit me up, leave a comment down below. I'm going to include the link to the script to the um, videos or tutorials I talked about in this live stream in the description below. So go check that out. And uh, I really hope that <laughs> Chris Hill, yeah, I should really get some chat moderators. I'm very new to streaming, so I don't know how moderators work. That would be a good idea. So I'm going to look into that. So thanks for the suggestion, buddy. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so. Thanks so much, everyone. Thanks so much for joining. Uh, I think we just hit like almost 600 plus concurrent viewers tonight, and that's amazing. So thank you so much for joining tonight. I really appreciate it. You are all the best. And again, I hope you've learned a little something. And I'll see you all in next week. Take care, guys.